10 of thousands of 18 year olds in the UK start university in September every year, starting with Freshers Week, but after that is over, the real work begins. University students are a group of teenagers who are at high risk of having mental health problems. This is because starting university is a major life transition and can be both exciting and overwhelming at the same time. Not only must students manage multiple academic and social situations, they must also come across challenges as they transition to adulthood. For example, greater independence but increased responsibilities. You no longer count on someone else to do things for you such as washing, ironing, cooking, cleaning and managing your time and finances. However, with greater independence, a student's social life can be a lot of fun. They can make lots of new friends, join all kinds of societies and enjoy living and working together. The long holidays are also something they should not take for granted. Once in full-time employment, holidays will be much, much shorter. A survey that I took place for my research showed over half students had mental and physical health problems whilst at university. The other half haven't got any problems at all. This is a huge figure. There are roughly 2.3 million students in the UK. Potentially, if this figure carried on, over 1 million students could have mental and physical health problems. The dropout rate has increased over 200% due to students' mental health since 2009. From July 2017 to 18, 95 suicides were committed from students at university. Some of these reasons why this is, is because student loans are not covering their rent and also the vast tuition fees, adding stress to the university work they have got already. As well as they're trying to find extra money to pay for the rent and other things like food. As well as studying at the same time. Something that can help and prevent some students having these struggles is, is the student were allowed to choose their own student loan so they will be able to make sure it will cover their rent and also be able to do food jobs and other added extras that may be related to their courses. Instead of basing up a parent's income because the majority of the students move away from home and now we are classed as adults, but the student's parents may not be able to afford them financially. A downside for students to choose their own loan is everybody could choose the max loan. So there needs to be a way that everybody can choose the loan and most suitable for them. Maybe if they do base it off our parents income and then if it doesn't cover it then you have the option to choose the rest of the money required to fix it. So that then students would not have to struggle or stress about finding the extra money. I'm going to find out how different students cope adjusting to these changes. I interviewed three students with various living arrangements and experience of university life. They talked about the allocation of student loans and how they manage their finances. To support themselves financially, one took a gap year to earn some money and then go to university the following year, whereas one took a gap year to go around travelling waiting to decide what they wanted to do. And the last student went to university straight from college. They also talked about how being at university has affected their mental and physical health. If you are struggling with mental health and don't know who to talk to, your university will have a support team or the course of the Samaritans who are available 24-7. I went to visit Hannah who studied primary education at university but dropped out. I went to see why this was. Why did you choose to go to university? I wanted to go into a career in teaching so I thought going to university and getting a teaching degree was the best option. Why did you choose to go to student halls? When I looked at universities I chose to move city. And I thought that commuting would become expensive and too difficult. And I also liked the idea of having some independence. While well, sitting in student halls, did your main student loan cover your rent? No, it didn't. I had to use my own money to pay for any outstanding fees. So you had to use your own money to pay for your rent. So how did you find the extra money to pay for it? 
last year I took a gap year and I worked a full time job because I knew that I wouldn't be able to afford rent and then he had any extras. So then I used my own money from my savings. After taking the gap year, did you find that earning that extra money helped? Not really. After I paid for my rent with my loan and extra money, I found that the extra money that I had saved was going down really quickly when I was paying for anything extra like food, social events or travel home at weekends. We'll come back to Hannah later, but now we're going to move on to Amor who's a second year film student and we're going to find out why he decided to stay at home. I went to university so I could further my studies. I really liked doing film at college so I wanted to get a degree so I could get a better job. Um, what made you decide to stay at home? I decided to stay at home because the accommodation choices I had were very few and they all ran out because I was late applying. So I just decided to stay at home to save money. If you don't mind me asking, what do you use the maintenance loan for? I use my maintenance loan for holidays and experiences as well as buying technology and stuff so I can help with my film production better. Like for example I bought a camera and upgraded my computer so I could edit better. We find out about Amor later. Now we move on to Grace who's in the second year and was in student halls and now she lives in a rented housing. Why did you choose to go to university? So originally I didn't want to go to university because I didn't know what I wanted to do and I didn't want to rack up a lot of debt because it's so expensive. Um, so I decided to take a gap year and I did a foundation year in fashion and textiles and then I really enjoyed that which made me think that the next step would be to um, go to university. So I study fashion knitwear and knitted textiles at the moment um, and from doing that, I've actually learned a lot, so it's actually really good that I decided to go to university. As it is a creative course, the majority of your work is practical. How do you manage to cope with the workload? So the workload is really high, and sometimes it does involve sacrificing other things like um, my social life. But most of the time, I try to be really careful with the way that I balance my time. So. I'll go into university early or I will stay late um, and luckily at our university it's really good in terms of resources we have so it's open really late, the machines um, I can go on really late, things like that and I've got a lot of time with my tutors which is really helpful. Um, but yeah. What made you decide to drop out of university? I struggle with anxiety and I think being on part of a full-time course and living away from home I felt quite isolated so I decided I didn't want to be on the course anymore. Well while I was struggling with this was there anything that could make your university life experience more easier? I didn't really feel all that supported by the university. I think being on a full-time course and because I didn't have a set timetable I found it difficult to make friends with my course mates and flatmates so I didn't build great relationships with them and I also think if I had a better loan then I wouldn't have had to struggle financially so I would have found it more enjoyable.
our main concern is based on our parents' income. Do you believe that it should be sorted in a different way? So I do believe that students should have the choice to choose how much money they want for their loan. But on the other side, I do see how it's not guaranteed that they'll all pay it back. So obviously there'll be an issue on the student finance end. Our maintenance loan is based on our parents' income. Do you believe we should choose our own loan now because we're classed as your medals? For me, I've got quite a specific case because um, they take into account my mum's wages and my stepdad's wages. But because my stepdad has his own children to pay for, I don't think, and my mum is unemployed, I don't think it's fair that they take his wages into account because he shouldn't be financially responsible for me. Um, and my mum can't afford to be financially responsible for me. So I would have liked to have chosen my loan so that um, I can have the right amount, especially because my course is quite expensive. And also because I don't think I would have time to have a part-time job because it's so in intense. Um, but equally, I don't think that everyone should necessarily get the chance to choose because I don't know that as young adults we are yet responsible enough and we haven't been taught how to budget correctly maybe if there was something in place where we were taught how to um like use our money effectively rather than just like splashing it out on a nice mm. out or whatever then i think maybe it would be quite good but i don't know that we are ready or in that position yet to be able to choose how we should um how much money we should get for our loan
now you're no longer at university, uh, what are your plans for the future? I'm hoping to go back to university in September to do a different course, but this time stay closer to home. I'm also hoping that I'll be able to get a part-time job at the weekends to help me pay for travel. So come September, uh, is there anything that you could take from this previous university experience that you think will help you? When I was at uni I learned that I need to be a lot more proactive with my work and any assignments, so I'm hoping to put that forward into my next course. So while I do do things like cook and clean and pay for my food, I know that I'm not as independent as people living in halls because they're forced to do that. You live in student halls first year. Uh, how does that compare to now living in rented housing? Um, I, living in student halls I did really enjoy. I liked the social side of it and I liked living around loads of students. But in terms of the actual flat, it wasn't anywhere near as nice as living in housing. It wasn't like, it didn't feel like home. And obviously moving away from home is quite a big deal. Like becoming really independent is quite a big deal. And so you want to go back to like a really like safe, homely environment if you've had like mm. a stressful day at uni or just like generally you want to be like comfortable so living in a house now is a lot nicer especially because the, there's more pressure in second year than living in like a flat in first year yeah so is there much price between the uh, student halls and the rented housing yeah so the student halls was a lot more expensive um obviously it's a lot closer to uni but compared to student housing and the fact that you're living in such like a nicer environment and the house that we live in is really nice um, it is a lot more expensive to live in student accommodation I now move on to Lewis and find out how he's coped in his first year at university why did you choose to go to university? yeah so um, I chose university because I study sport I'm in my first year of uh, coaching in sports science over on Clifton campus. Uh, uh, I realised that in sport, on top of having experience, you need the piece of paper to say you've got a degree and you've studied in that specific area of like sports science or sport coaching or sport psychology because um, a lot of employers don't take you anymore um, without that piece of paper saying that you've been there and you've done it. Um, a lot of top Jobs now like the FA, UEFA, um, turn a lot of people down and obviously there's hundreds of thousands of students like me wanting to go into sport and so I need that, that degree. So what are the benefits you found of being at uni? Yeah, uh, I'd say the biggest one for me was finding my independence and realising that I can cook for myself. and stuff like that uh, and that, that's been a big like change for me I wouldn't say I was like a, a mum's boy but I, I definitely relied on them massively uh, so I really had to sort of pull my finger out and not be as lazy as I used to be um, but it's been really helpful because when I go home now I find myself just cooking for myself and cooking for the family uh, which is quite a breeze and I really enjoy that I can't say I actually cook that much at uni, but for some reason I do it at home. Uh, on top of that, I'd say meeting new people. I've met a lot of a variety of different people, and that's been really interesting to see how they, they act and they are 
in the same situation as same situation as me because we're all there. We all don't know anyone, and I moved into halls with six other people that I didn't know. Um, and it's been great to really make some great friendships. Uh, we have a group of like fifteen of us, and uh, we have our ups and downs. Um, but ultimately, that's been the best experience and the, the best positive. Yeah. Uh, has there been any negatives while being at university? If so, like, how have you dealt with it? Yeah, uh, I'd say a big negative for me was the drinking culture. I got, I definitely got dragged into it through freshers, uh, and I knew before I came to uni that alcohol doesn't agree with me, but I sort of tried to think that it didn't. Uh, well, yeah, and sort of drank a bit too much and ruined my body and my body clock. I was like staying up all night till 11 and then going to bed from 11 till t like 11 till 1 which was not great uh, uh, yeah so that that's a nugget one negative uh, I'd say another one would be having free time I was warned that I would have loads of free time I didn't realize how much I would really have and uh, that's been quite a shock I found myself just staying in my bed all day and just having like one hour lecture at like four o'clock I probably wouldn't end up going because I've had nothing else to do in the day. Um, so I've really had to start forcing myself to do to do stuff and start work early uh, and realise to really also, like ultimately use that time wisely. Uh, I'd say that's that'd be it, yeah. Uh, what have you learned uh, about being in first year at university that year you're going to bring into the second year? Yeah, uh, I would say definitely start work early. I've, I've left a lot of my work to the last minute and found myself in the library quite a few times having all-nighters on deadline day uh, and that's been really stressful and ruined my sleeping pattern uh, for, for the few days afterwards. And I've just done nothing, haven't done anything with my life after that. Uh, and so, yeah, I'd take that in the second year to really focus on the work that's given to me first, start it as soon as I get it, and sort of take it in steps and create deadlines for myself. Uh, and other than that, I think making sure that I do my cleaning. I'm, I'm quite well known for leaving my pots out and dishes. Uh, and I'm going to be living in a house with nine lads next year, so that's going to be key or else the house is going to be disgusting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that'll be it. Yeah. Um, so do you do any extra curricular activities and does it affect you financially? Yeah, so because I'm studying a coaching course, I do a lot of volunteering and coaching different football teams. So I coach uh, blind football in Mansfield so I have to travel there by myself um, most Sundays and Saturdays uh, and that costs a lot so I have to get a bus into the city from Clifton and then a train to Mansfield and pay for that and then come back um, and at the start of the year I didn't get myself a bus pass because I thought I'm on Clifton, my lectures are going to be on Clifton, why do I need one? My parents are paying stupid amounts of money anyway a bus pass, I think that's cheeky for them to pay. I think I feel really bad. Uh, that's probably a re that was a really bad decision of mine, and I've definitely spent more on buses going into the city to different volunteering areas um, and doing my work. So I work for the university, and we normally get picked up to go to schools, and we work in schools. I get picked up in the city, and I have to pay to get into the city. That's another like two pounds. For a return um, and it's really racked up and I've spent way more than the bus pass cost uh, yeah and I've wasted loads of money doing that yeah. I'm Lucy Nightingale and this is the next chapter of my life
just like every first year at uni, I was going to drink a lot, study a bit, and sleep too much. I had a need. A need that has to be satisfied. I wish I knew how to quit. I know you're a good person. No, I'm not. Dream lover, so I don't have to dream alone. Dream lover, where After finding out how students are coping whilst being at university, I went to interview Israel to find out what university life is like after graduating. What's one thing you took from university that you learned? Uh, definitely learned a lot about myself. I like a lot about my um, my own character and the things I like and dislike. Um, I feel like uni is a very formative time, so you probably get to know um, yeah those things and through all the things that you the people you meet and through the, the things you get involved with. So yeah, I definitely take away that um, from uni. If you could change one part of your university experience, what would you go back and change? Um, I probably wouldn't commit to as much stuff as I did. I was quite busy a lot of the time. Um, I definitely utilised all that free time I had, um, but I think I would probably take a bit more of a chill pace. Um, looking back, um, it did it did get me a bit stressed out at times. Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely, definitely, probably I probably wouldn't work as hard as well. I <laughs> 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 should say that. <laughs> That's fine. And, uh, how's your finance? How's your financial situation affected you in any way after university? Uh, yeah, definitely still in that student overdraft. Um, still need to work my way out of that, um, which I guess has been a bit of a stress. Um, but yeah, it's working, and so yeah, I know I'll eventually get out of it. So yeah. Sick. After interviewing various types of students, current or past, in various years at university, all their experiences are different and found many ways to get around university life. One thing that won't change is the effect at the cost of university that each student has struggled with in many ways. From having to take a gap year to earn some money, but yet still has to dip into their own savings to maybe afford rent and other resources to stay in at home. Second year can appear a lot cheaper because student halls are so expensive which renting a house in second year could cut the price to 30 to 50 pound a week off. Although students have a lot of time on their hands, they still all struggle with completing their work to their deadlines. The survey that took place, just over 50% of students loan doesn't cover their rent and a whopping 66% said that we should choose our own loan than base it off a parent's income. Here are some of the responses why we should choose our own loan. There isn't all negatives of being in university, there are a lot of positives. Most students have the best time of their lives and make memories they will never forget there. As well as gaining key life skills such as independence which is a huge factor going into after university life. Hopefully in the future there will be a way that students won't have to worry about finding extra money which hopefully then will reduce students mental and physical health problems and cut down on student struggles.